The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin Tyler McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis Sherman McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary from McElroy. And boys, it's here we are. Uh-huh. A lot of folks said we wouldn't make it to 340, but here we are. In uh, This is it now, isn't it? Is this who, who said that? Looks the, like we made it. The haters and the critics and the critic <clears throat> cartoon um, with John Lovitz. I had an idea because uh-huh, yeah. we've been going at this for 340 episodes. We've been doing this for 19 years. Y'all think you can fight me? Fight these tears? No, you can't because we've been going for so long. And the main criticism we've been getting from the critic cartoon is that just so stale. Just extremely stale. Yeah, um, a lot of people have said it's stale now. They, it's they getting said crusty. It's, they said it's got uh, it's got crust. Says like year old wheat thins. I said I'd still fuck with year old wheat thins. They're still <laughs> wheat thins. Like hello, um, especially if they're so f- if they're one of those like rosemary and olive like oil. They're like one of the flavor thing? blasted ones. Absolutely, Travis. Pizza blasted wheat thins. Yes. So I had. A, I like Triscuits a, better. Whoa. Well, now this is the whole thing. Yeah. Whoa, Triscuit, tr- Triscuits are tr- Triscuits are like a single use case food <laughs> but, stuff. There's like Triscuits two- are. Uh, if if I eat a Triscuit, are a better I'm cheese satis- conveyance than wheat thins. Don't well, I yeah, don't just fuck because there's more area on, uh, upon which for the chi- wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Justin, did you just say you don't fuck with cheese? I don't fuck with cheese on cracker. I like like raw cheese. I don't fuck with that. You know that. You know that about me. I don't fuck. With I raw didn't cheese. know that. I don't What's fuck with raw on- cheese. Uh, so wait, it's gotta be grilled or no? That's it? That's it's the just, only sort No, it's gotta be s- melted. I don't like the, the texture of raw cheese. I like cooked right. cheese. Pizza. Cool. Yes, grilled cheese. I got yes. you a, I got you a fucking fondue set for Christmas once. I did not know I was getting you a, essentially a mandatory cheese, like, con- conversion device. Right. It's right. exciting. It so is the, any, it, that, that fondue set is the Ellis Island of my cheese. Uh-huh. You, come, you have to come here first and give get, me, get the, give me your time. American I'm melting hungry. pot. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Okay. So listen, fuckos. Okay. 340 is so stale. People hate it. People like just old hate cheese. It. Like old cheese. And so I had an idea to mix up. It can be like a special episode. Maybe we do it every th- every 340. Next one's popping off with 680 here in 2024 or whatever. Um, and that my idea is just to change the structure of the show a little bit. It's a very special episode. You know how TV shows do special episodes sometimes where like there was the real life Simpsons that one time. Mm-hmm. And then there was the episode of Simpsons where you saw Homer's dick and everybody mm-hmm. was so excited about it. And like it was yeah. a TV guide, like catch it, Homer's dick. What's it going to be like? Weird? Probably. Yeah. Um, it's going to be like that. It'll be our Homer's dick episode. And my idea for the structure, you guys ready for this? I think it's quite clever. Mm-hmm. Shows, shows an hour long. Okay. That's what new. if we what if we each have a 20 minute chunk of the podcast where we just we can do our own we can do our own thing and we can kind of dial out a little bit and step back and just do what we do what we want to do and just take a quick 20 minute break uh, and I'll I'll volunteer to take this first chunk because I think that's only fair. And I'm right now we're at four minutes, so I'm I, right now I have 16 minutes. But um, during my 16 minute break, I can get some things done that I can't get done because my baby has um, stopped sleeping like he's in a fucking Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Uh, and I can just like go you can cut take my care nail. Of your dream warrior baby. I can take care of my dream warrior baby, or I can take care of my me and sleep on the rug of my office. <laughs> Let me and tell you why up. this is an amazing idea, Griffin. Well, hold on. I want to tell everybody all else I want to do, and that's I'm going to wake up with with like 90 seconds left and cut my nails, because I've been meaning to do it for like a week and a half. 
and I haven't been able to cut my nails for a week and a half. So <laughs> dad life, hashtag dad life. I, I love this because it's like arrested development sort of take on it. Like we'll never get all the original guys in the same room again. Yes, so this sure. is like a spinoff episode. Well, and not only that, but I, the most commonly heard feedback we get is I can't tell the difference between your voices. So mm. like, no, if we don't announce it, I think we could go long chunks of the show without talking. And I don't think if we just occasionally said like, and I'm Justin and like, whoever says it, it doesn't really matter. People will be like, yeah, this tracks. I think that and was the, all three of them. And the chemistry between mm. the three of us is excellent, right? That it is the, it's the, the witch's cauldron in which our comedy magic is, is mixed up and we cast our, our spell. Like the fucking Sanderson sisters. Mm-hmm. But what about the individual one on one stuff? We don't get that anymore. So I'm going to go to fucking sleep on the floor of my office without a pillow or blanket or anything. And then I'm going to cut my nails and we'll see what like you guys are, have, what, what you guys are bringing to the table. And then, and then I'll, I'll come back and we'll do me and Travis and me and Justin. Um, wh- this is going to be weird when we hit where a Yahoo answers would normally go or maybe we just a won't have squad. it there. Yeah. Yeah, or if yeah, fucking shit. You're right. I I wouldn't trust you guys to 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 get the good yahoos going. I would trust you guys to do sad libs. I well, think yes, it, I think you would handle it with dignity and aplomb. Uh, a dog could do sad libs, Travis. The work that you do could be easily recreated by a dog. What? How so, awesome would that be? It would be good though. That I is that's a dog. I might have to work that out. That is a dog's purpose. So <laughs> to do. Oh, listen to that. Listen, yeah, we got a volunteer. In. She's doing it. I love well, that. She just said boner. <laughs> oh, I love it. So that's, I oh, mean, that's man. a good one. These are better than mine. Oh, no. Yeah, these are really good. I do enjoy do you- how much of Griffin's time we've we've used up with this prattling on. Yeah, I'm actually starting to feel, because now I was fine when it was like four minutes, but now it's like almost seven, and... I could do so much stuff in the seven minutes that I no longer have anymore. I could go to heaven, you know what I mean? Yeah, do I a love little, that. Do a little, clo- a little closet kissing, uh, or I could just cut my fucking nails for once because it's 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 getting pretty Guinness Book of World Records over here, folks. It's rough stuff. Yeah. Um, just as a test from the last time you heard me talk, I just like got up and left my microphone and just oh, went good. away. I kept my headphones on so I could hear you guys, but like I was in the other room. I was just enjoying the moment. I don't want folks to get mad at us either and say like, "Is the you guys aren't taking this seriously?" I did. This shows my everything. Are you kidding, kidding me? me right now? But but I will just leave to go take a nap. I will take. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'll start by carrying the load, Griffin. You obviously can't sleep now because you've only got uh, thirteen minutes, almost. You're right. Now. I'll sacrifice. I'll sacrifice my block. Okay. Great. Um, I don't think we're going to do your idea, uh, but I would like to read a question if you guys are ready. Oh, all right. Okay. Just, I want you to know that I'm going to spread my 20 minutes throughout the show. So if there's like a 30 second chunk where you're like, hmm, Travis hasn't said anything for a while. That's oh, my time. Okay. So just your usual. Just the usual thing. Sort yeah. of way. I'm probably going to zone out and like check my Twitter replies to see what people have said about me. And Hey, what's the sound? What's that? Really? Really? I want a munch! Squad! Squad. I want to munch! Squad! Squad. Here's here's the thing about the munch squad, Justin, especially when you lead with it. I put about three to four hours of work into putting together a question list, (laughs) and then we lead off with a munch squad, and it just, it just. I have told you so many fucking times, just save the ones we don't use. You never do it. But those are old. They get stale like old cheese, Justin. They're evergreen, Travis. Just recycle them if we don't use them. I've told you this a thousand times. Well, we just keep getting these topical problems. Shut up. If we, if we. Dude, at, ridiculous at the rate at the rate we travis puts together a list of like 14 questions and then we answer three during the show if we reused ones from the back catalog we would be answering questions today like i'm sad that friends is ending <laughs> yeah i know everybody has everybody in america has probably felt a vibe this week of like things are really good and i wonder oh and if you're that's weird, <laughs> that's for, weird. Me, no. for me it was opposite 
Now, I'm pretty sure everybody in America has felt this way, and you haven't exactly known why. Um, mm-hmm. but this is about osmosis. It's about fluid intelligence. Um, it's about something, it's something an awareness that we all share. And that awareness is that finally, after months of being denied it, finally Taco Bell has dropped mm. it on us. That's right. <gasps> The Naked Chicken Chalupa is in stores nationwide as of Jan 26. The sh- there? Here's the subhead of the press hmm. release. I, I, well, ex- so explain, explain what the... Th- what, yeah. The subhead of the press release explains it. The shell is the chicken. The okay. chicken uh-huh. is the shell. Uh-huh. When you eat a sandwich mm-hmm. and you eat a taco, you are participating in a unspoken social agreement that there are parts of your food you're allowed to touch with your bare grubby nasty naked Correct. hands. Correct. Mm-hmm. And it's the you know it's it's the carbohydrate parts of the of the exper- of the food experience. You can touch it touch it right on the carbs. That's fine. And you can eat where you touched it on the carbs and that's fine because we all agree that that's okay. Th- this is a this and the du- and its bastard brother the double down. Is a such a is such a perversion of that rule, mm-hmm. where because that's that's the part of the food that is not good to touch, not pleasant. It's not good touch. That's not good. To, it, no, it feels pleasant. I'm sure it feels pleasant or whatever. But like that that's not the that's not the touching part of the food. It's not the carbohydrate. Uh, quick sidebar before we talk about this. Um, I'm sorry that this podcast is like it is sometimes. Quick sidebar. When you guys are driving and your wife is in the passenger seat and you're on a road trip Mm -hmm. and you stop for food on the way, Sydney had this thing where she would unwrap the food halfway so I could hold it in a wrapper while I ate the food. And after 10 years, I finally told her, that's insane. I just need to hold the sandwich, like like just the whole thing. Do you guys run into this issue and where do you stand on it? Hmm. As long as we're talking hmm. about touching Here's, food. My problem is that if I do that, I will, I might, I will be very cognizant of the fact that I am, I don't want to eat the wrapper mm-hmm. and seem exactly. like some sort of, seem like some sort of comedy fat man. Um, <laughs> and, there's nothing and, worse than like pulling away and seeing a bite mark in the paper. In their paper, but I already swallowed it and it was like, damn, that checkers paper though. It's got like a spice to now, it. That's, that's a problem, right? right there. Give me some flavored edible paper. You see people yeah. like that on on my strange addiction all the time. You know, people don't eat that's their mattresses. Fair. The first bite is always by accident. So my strange addiction, the original Munch Squad. <laughs> I want to munch a mattress. <laughs> um, uh, Justin, to answer your question, if I am traveling, uh, my food of choice is always and will always be. The Dairy Queen chicken strip basket with uh, gravy and toast within it. Mm, Are good, you good fucking kidding me that when oh, you're operating this. a motor vehicle, your food of choice is a dippable? It's a dippable? I will drive gravy. 40 to 50 miles out of my way to find a Dairy Queen if I'm on the road. Yeah. But it's a dippable? But it's also got gravy in it, Justin. How often do you find gravy you don't, in a fast food experience? If you're eating fast food while you're driving, you have to let go of the fact that you will not have, like, I'm living ketchup free on this one. This one's a ketchup free mish because I can't be dipping while I'm driving. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Anyway, Unless have we ever- you've practiced it a bajillion times, oh. which I have. All right. Did we ever tell the story of when we were doing the Pacific uh, Northwest? shows in portland seattle and vancouver and it was riley's birthday and she was with us and so you stopped at a dq and we got our ice cream cake that was hard as cinder block and we ate a a a micrometer of it and then fucking travis tried to give the cake back to the people at the register as if to say you can hand this hand out free slices to folks if you want um and then i think we just sort of set it on top of the garbage can and got back on that lonely road (laughs) i I, I do want to know i wasn't trying to get a refund for the unused portion of no travis went up there and said you guys sell ice cream here huh how about you give this ice cream away for free and they said no and he said well we'll throw it away if not and they said this welcome to dq we don't care where the ice cream ends up as long as it's not here 
Uh, so the naked chalupa is the Please. question on everybody's mind. The naked chicken chalupa. Taco Bell is coming unshelled with its latest food innovation. It's coming unspooled. unspooled. It's becoming unraveled. Uh, coming in the form of the first taco shell made entirely of marinated all white crispy chicken. As if, as if history <laughs> has its eyes on Taco Bell. <laughs> They uh, did it. First, we won the space race, and now we've won the taco shell, but it's chicken race. The- no, that means you. That means you lost the Earth race if you made a chicken shell. What's so? That's what I have to say about it. What does Marisa Thalberg, chief marketing officer at Taco Bell Corp, have to say? Well, she has to say this. Something this delicious yet different is bound to ruffle some feathers. Some oh. might even <laughs> cluck their tongues at it. However. <laughs> Fuck, this is funny. However, we feel <laughs> confident that once our fans get a taste of the naked chicken chalupa, they're going to understand exactly why this is our next big, fun, and craveable innovation. Following the footsteps of the Doritos Locos Taco five years ago and the case Oh Lupa, my god, the slow march of time. It is a nightmare. You can tell they kind of feel it though, right? Like, listen, we need another hit. We need a hit so bad. We need a hit. It's been five years since the taco, taco loco, taco Dorito, taco. The shell. What's the shell? Well, it's four it's ounces of marinated all white meat, antibiotic free chicken, kicked up with bold Mexican spices and seasoning, and it's packed with fresh. Shred- now they they describe the chicken there. The the clause that is missing from that sentence, of course, is that has been bent into a fucking taco <laughs> shell. <laughs> To a ghoulish smile. <laughs> also, there's diced ripe tomatoes, cheddar cheese, and creamy avocado <sighs> ranch. Justin, can I tell you why I am just the most fucking pissed off at this uh, press release? Oh, jeez. Why are you in so the first, angry? In the first sentence, they chicken pun twice. Yeah, and then they and sort of then the nothing. Conceit. Yeah. I'm I'm in I'm in the I'm in the desert right now yeah. looking for a good chicken pun oasis, you, but there is none. I do want to just point something out very quickly. Please do on this. On the antibiotic free section, there's an asterisk. Horrifyingly, there's an asterisk. And if we scroll down to the end of the press release, it says antibiotic chicken in this case means chicken raised without antibiotics important to human medicine. Okay, so okay. All right. So what you mean? This chicken, does, this chicken does not have rubella. Good, good. <laughs> so it doesn't. We have... didn't give this chicken penicillin. Don't you worry. Okay, great. But other ones, yeah. But it's antibiotic free. You got it. Eat your chicken, tubby. Um, um and you're gonna there's... have to enjoy it on a wing and a prayer. If this is the last episode of our show, there's not a Bim Bam 341. I want everybody to know it is because I have walked into the Taco Bell that is around the corner from my house, and I did have a bomb strapped to my chest. I did demand that they make me a Doritos Locos chicken chalupa mistake taco. If you think that isn't fucking common, you don't know these motherfuckers. Can you blast it and then crunch wrap it? What, sir? I can't look at my chest. <laughs> look at the device. Crunch wrap and blast the chicken shell. <laughs> I have nothing left to live for. I'm in a Taco Bell ordering food hacks. <laughs> Give it to me. Spray the chicken with Doritos dust. And then wrap it in cinnamon crunch, sugar, cap and crunch bites. Wrap bite. it! Why are you having trouble with this? That's a flavor that'll give them something to squawk about. Uh, that would be good to demand it in a crunch wrap, and they say, well, sir, to do that, we'd have to have a flat chicken piece. Like, yeah! I know! Can you imagine? Yes. Can you imagine flat chicken? <laughs> Feeling peckish? Stop it. Travis? I Wait, I take have your, one take more. Your tw- take your 20 minutes! This, uh, it's something to crow about. It's in there. I haven't. Yeah, that's I'm right. We use that all natural yet. antibiotic free crows <laughs> in our naked chicken chicken. <laughs> no, like a rooster crows. If, uh, if antibiotic do you free. Wanna, do you want a bite of this? Yes, you cockle doodle do. If antibiotic free means some antibiotics, um, then naked chicken chalupa <laughs> could certainly mean naked crow chalupa. <laughs> <laughs> These are crows that spent some time with chickens, like during spring break. Hey, listen, um, I don't want to panic anybody. Yeah, Reggie, uh, I've been the lead food scientist here for how long? It's <laughs> about uh, about ten years. You've really been fucking it up. Yeah, no, listen. Yesterday, I killed a crow, <laughs> and when I carved <laughs> its breast from its body, I carved the flesh. Oh. I collected the bones for the ritual. I collected but- the bones for the ritual. I carved the breast meat. Normally, I discarded, and then I came upon a terrifying realization. 
It was a perfect you. <laughs> the breasts <laughs> of the crow had formed a taco shell. This is a sign from the ancients. Margaret, can you bread this shit? <laughs> bread this for once, and Margaret, we're gonna need more crows. <laughs> <laughs> you are thinking far too far outside of the bun. You need to think a little You've bit closer mad. to the bun. You need to think a little bit closer to the bun. You're as far from the bun as like you're on some like Lovecraftian, like Miskatonic University. That's how that's how fucking far you are from the bun. You need to leave the university and move just like a few miles closer to the bun, please. People forget that like outside the bun encompasses all existence that is not contained mm-hmm. within the bun. There are no borders on being outside the bun. Limits are what keeps society on rails, Taco Bell. Get back near the bun, please. Please keep the We're bun talking in like eyesight. Some seventh or eighth meal shit at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm We're terrified. On eighth meal. Everything's topsy turvy. Oh. Oh. Get get back on the bun, Taco Bell. I want Taco Bell needs to way overcorrect, and their next thing is like we made a hamburger we're sorry we're sorry we're sorry we're sorry, we're, sorry. It's in the bun. <laughs> we're in the bun we're in the bun we're in the bun we're in the bun um let's just keep this fucking fast food train rolling real quick because i have a yet really good yahoo here from brooks Oz- oglesby thank you it's from yahoo answers user rebecca altaba user Re- it's just gonna take me a while altaba user rebecca says asks what is wendy's policy when you're lost is it true that if you go through the drive through at wendy's and say you're lost they have to give you a free cheeseburger what? Hey, I don't know where I am. And I thought I was supposed to be here, but I'm not. So, yes, yeah, sir. Pull around. You know the drill. Get your free get your free cheeseburger. But not directions? No. No, 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 no. Well, well where's the, look, hey, where's look the, under the bun, Justin. Where's I I 10? I'm trying to get I'm trying to get on the 10. Oh, good luck with that. Here's your cheeseburger. No charge. Having a rough day, huh? It can be scary being lost. It can be scary being lost. What if you're a little kid? I can't find my parents. Ah, oh, shit. Here, here you go. I'm sorry about your. I'm sorry about your folks. You, you don't even have a car. Do you have a phone or anything? no? Well, shit. Can I use your phone? No. Oh, no. Here's a burger. Here's a burger, though. You know. You know. Why here's the I- thing. We laugh, but do you, can you, Justin and, and Griffin? Can you tell me one hundred percent? That Wendy's will not give you a free cheeseburger if you are lost. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Dave, 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 Dave Thomas is a kind, kind soul. Probably. I don't I, know. He's, I'm he just saying. Been. I think Dave Thomas probably, if I remember this urban legend correctly, Dave Thomas used to hand deliver the hamburger. You would, you would pull up and say you're lost. There would be a beat and then your passenger door yeah. would open. Hey, you having a little bit of trouble? Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Like a, like a St. Bernard. Yeah. He would come find you <laughs> With the and bring you back to the Wendy's. Wrapped around his neck. <laughs> you could never- <laughs> and you had to eat it off his neck. You couldn't remove it from his neck. He was a nasty, nasty old man. Now that the problem I'm- is, is that once Dave Thomas saved you, you then owed him a life debt and you would have to come work at Wendy's for a fair wage. This was mm. not a weird, like, this was not taking advantage of people. That was just how he hired people. And that way you were never lost again because you just knew you worked at Wendy's. Now, sometimes Dave Thomas would wear his neck burger on, like, a long chain. So it would just, like, sort of be greasy on his chat, on his bare chest. Mm-hmm. And so you, you'd, you'd be in there and you'd be like, I'm, I'm lost. I'm trying to find, uh, the, I'm trying to get on, uh, uh, research highway. And, uh, but then Dave Thomas is there. And he's like, but now you're found. And he just sort of puts his chest like on you. <laughs> I know where, mm-hmm. you're, hey, Dave. I don't know where I am. I know where you are. You're home. I know where you are. I you're, know where you're gonna you're be. You're at your home right now. Wendy's. That's right. Shackle noise. Um. Um. Now, now I'm. I'm actually doing. Uh. uh I, I'm. I'm doing gluten free. So can I get a cup of chili? Oh yeah. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, why do we serve it so hot? Quick! 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 <laughs> Uh, listen, I, I'm a good guy. You're not going to want to eat the chili. <laughs> it's just cut up hamburgers that we couldn't sell. Did, you knew that, right? Okay. It's a cut up hamburgers <laughs> and ketchup and we make it real hot. <laughs> I don't even, we don't even put beans in it. I don't know how the fuck they get in there. <laughs> Where are these beans coming from? <laughs> We've discovered some sort of alchemy. that turns salt packets. <laughs> they just turn into beans in the cauldron. Now these kids will love this. Did you know that there was no beans in the top Wendy's chili? You just thought there were. And it's one of those, like, reality Weird. distortion things. Huh. Um, during a meeting at work yesterday afternoon, I noticed a tear 
Okay. I thought it was tear, but that wouldn't make sense with the rest of the sentence. I noticed a tear in the seat of a co-worker's pants. Somebody cried in my co-worker's butt. <laughs> a single tear in their pants. It was vertical, four or five inches long, but very narrow. You could see his black underwear, but nothing revealing. After mm. the meeting, I was going <laughs> to... You couldn't see his balls or whatever. <laughs> no balls on this one. <laughs> After the meeting, I was going to tell him about it, but I decided not to so he wouldn't worry about it for the rest of the day. I figured he would find it as soon as he got home, and telling him about it would only embarrass him when he couldn't do anything about it. Am I good, or should I have mentioned it to him? That's from Tom, oh uh, Torn in the Twin Cities. Or Tom. Or Tom. It looks like Tom. Our, our in, man, they trick you sometimes, because it just looks like the M shape. Can we lay down a blanket, so we, uh, and, and then we can, like, just sort of wipe any f- future questions like this just off the slate, and lay down a blanket, like, my friend had a booger, or my friend had some stuff in their teeth, or my friend, you know... And just say, like, always tell them, you always, you may not want to hear it, it may be challenging to hear it, but you need to fucking get your shit right. And I don't, I don't know what this guy does, except maybe he goes home. Everybody's always, 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 always looking for an excuse to take a half day at work. Mm Mm-hmm. And this is, mm-hmm. this is, uh, this is decent justification. For sure. Always, always, uh, if I have shit in my teeth, tell me, fucking tell me. If I have a big, just, just snozberry in there, just tell me about it so I can g- go deal with my shit. Also, like, I, you can I, I do, do things, like, there's things you can do in a context that off it, like, let him put a couple safety pins in there, or maybe some right? fucking masking tie tape. Tie a jacket something. around his waist. Yeah. Yeah, tie ja- a jacket around the waist, safety pins, no matter what, it's going to be bringing back like a, a mid-aughts hot topic look that is really popping off again. <laughs> but I, um, I really like the question asker's justification of like, I didn't want him to worry about it for the rest of the day, so instead you let him get home and th- and realize it and think about like all the lunges he did and all the times he stood in front of people without knowing it. So now he could worry about it for the rest of his life. What if, but like the Bible says you should address the uh, plank in your own eye before you uh, worry about the dust in your neighbor's eye. What if you were like, Hey, listen, you have a, a small tear in the back of your pants and they spin around on you and you're like, you're not wearing pants. You forgot or, pants or- today. You have a two by four in your eye. What? <laughs> what? Oh, no. God. And also, Gosh. you just discovered that you're back in high school because you never finished that one class, so you didn't really graduate, and you have to take that math test again, but you don't remember any of the math? Whoa, what? Whoa, what? Oh, am I the only one who has that dream? That's not a, it's not a dream. This was a real scenario Justin was addressing. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure out what scenario you might what find yourself in where dreams? you're not wearing any pants, and you okay. didn't know it. Until someone right. said it. It was just kind of a funny joke for our podcast, Trav. Um, sorry you got so hung up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like I like this, though. I like that. That's Travis's pitch to a fun new game, and that's what if these questions are dreams. And it's a, it's, a, it's an advice avenue we've never really explored before, which is like, oh, you dreamed this. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't happen. You dreamt it. So you're fine. <laughs> That would be a um, good tack to take with your coworker. Like, hey, there's a tear in your pants, but before you get worried, none of dreaming. this is real. <laughs> Kiss me. Kiss me right now. <laughs> oh, oh, your teeth are falling out. Now Better eat hurt. that stapler. It's marshmallows. Um, Justin, can you do the next question after this one? Because I love it, and I I, I want to do it right now. The one after it is great, too. Travis really did a good job. Um, yeah, hey, it's too you. bad we're only going to get to do like one more of these because we spent a lot of time talking about nasty chicken. I work, nasty, I work in chicken. an office with the rest of my company, and at the end of the day, we exchange pleasantries saying good night, <laughs> have a good weekend, etc. However, sometimes my brain interrupts these rote actions and tells me, blow them a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Blow them a kiss. I've never done it. Thank God for impulse control. But the fleeing thought springs into my head up to a couple of times a month. How do I fight these thoughts down and make it go away? Or should I embrace this freedom from standard and dive in? That's from Neurotic Newark. Holy shit. Is there a method? Is there a way? Is there a way to blow a kiss that is not... um? Ch- childish, like child look. Like, is it, has anybody ever blown a kiss and be like, mmm, da- cool? Or like, mmm, professional? Or mmm, adult sexy? <laughs> I think if you practice it well enough, you could do like blow kiss into finger guns. Like, nah. I just did it. I just did it. And I think if you just like, 
if you just like kiss your hand and then like very very slightly extend it, you don't like create a fucking launch pad that you then boost your uh, boost your kiss off of, like mm-hmm. a, some sort of VTOL plane. Uh, if you just like and then just sort of very lightly, don't even lay it flat, just like take it away from your face. That's kind of a cool look, like. Um, I'm doing. I, I know you can't see it, but it, it, it does kind of look cool how I'm doing it. Uh, Maybe you blow a kiss in your right hand, and what's that in your left hand? A dove. Okay, that's oh, good. direct. I don't I want f- you to have to have a bird. I think the only context in which blowing a kiss is acceptable for a professional setting is if your job yeah. is James Bond villain, and you just put him in a trap that's supposed to kill him. If you do mm-hmm. that, and you blow him a kiss. It's like very. That's very evil. Really cool. Very taunting. I love that. But um other than that, uh no ever. Oh I'm pretty sure. Dang. That's you should, re- I feel like you didn't really think about it. Okay. D- Bond villain, killing James Bond, for sure. Yeah. That one's definite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe if you just fired someone and you're a real jerk. Yeah, that Arriva de- you could be like <laughs> Arriva Arriva That's good. <laughs> I thought that's what you were gonna say, but you said a real jerk. But um <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one too. Or it could just be like your new thing. I, I think, I, really it, I think like, it could be, I, I think it could be cute. I don't know. I mean, it would be a Here's fucking a, a zag, though, I, I right? Like, I mean, it would be a zag and a half. Yeah, it's a zag and a half. <sighs> I like this idea of your brain as like this friend of yours who like always comes up with suggestions. And it's like, well, you know what you could try? Blowing him a kiss? And it's like, no. It's like, maybe if just once you tried it, your friend would be like, okay, thank you. For acknowledging my input, I was wrong. Or maybe it is the way to go. Maybe your brain knows better. Maybe, maybe your subconscious like, is like, blow him a kiss. You do it and suddenly like, ooh, I like Todd's new thing. And what's that? Suddenly Todd's CEO. Uh, uh, fucking a thousand years ago. Fucking Dark Ages, boom, boom, bam. There's just the three of us sitting around a, a stick in a swamp. And somebody was like, I, I, I conducted myself with mine surf and uh felt the extraordinary urge to grasp his hand firmly and shake it shake it violently should i embrace this neurotic in newark um <laughs> and it's like that first person was just like give me that hand sucker and he grabbed it and shook it. it was like this is good i like it i don't see i like this i don't see why this has to be any different from that give, give me that little paw Grant, what are you doing are you are we fighting no <laughs> we're not fighting but i want to go down. you can i'm gonna let you go hold on i'm gonna let you go i'm just gonna hey look i feel like we just did business yeah i know yeah yeah i know it's because i grabbed you a bit of advice on this advice show. What about the first time someone did a fist bump? <laughs> like, oh, God, yeah. he's going to punch me in the stomach. God, please don't. No, 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 no. No, you don't Or a high five. Are you going to smack me on top of the head? No, friend. No, no, friend. A bit of advice. If this is going to be a new thing, if you're going to instant, you have to do it so you can't acknowledge that you've just done a new thing. You have to do it like, yeah, good night. And then go back to your desk and let them soak it in. Without you doing it and then kind of watching their reaction, you can't acknowledge that this is a new thing you're trying. This has to be a thing you've done a million times. You don't even think about it anymore. This is just w- your thing. I found the way to describe the physical act of this kiss blow that I'm talking about. Like the cool, confident kiss blow. That's again, just a very slight, like just barely hand away from it. And imagine that you're Glenn Close and you've just met an enthusiastic young fan mm-hmm. and you're just like you're you're walking out of the fucking club where you've just been bumping it all night because you're glenn close and you know how to tear shit up and you see a fan on the street and they're like glenn glenn i i you're you're so great i'm so glad that you're getting back on broadway uh the kiss that bl- kiss blow that she does in that moment of just like she doesn't go through it all the way it's just oh th- and she takes her hand away from her f- face just a little bit and you're like oh glenn Glenn, you've got me. You that's got- that's sort of the style I'm talking about. Griffin, Justin, I feel like we are we are missing a big component here that we're not addressing. Because mm. we keep talking about the kiss. That I don't think that's the weird part. Yeah, I think it's the blowing. It's the blowing. That's what I'm talking about. Omit, omit the blow. Just kiss that hand and pull it away a little bit, like like Glenn would do. But is that the same? Does that still count as blowing? That's just mwah, but it's not the. You know, it's, it still count as blowing a kiss if you are just 
kissing without the correspondent. Because then the kiss is just hanging in the air an inch in front of you until you blow it at them. There is a terrible risk that I had not calculated until this exact moment. Um, if you're uh, in a professional setting and you do the, the, the kiss your hand and then you blow the kiss over to the other person, if they catch that kiss and put mm-hmm. it on their cheek, they have just power mm-hmm. played you so fucking bad that you're probably yeah. going to have to like quit and give them your job and sign over the business to them or something like depending on what your responsibilities are. But like oh. you will never get the that the proverb the the metaphorical <laughs> ball back in that relationship. You've been You're going to have to butterfly kiss them if that happens. Yeah, that's your oh, only man. option. Or what if they put it on their mouth? You ha- you're fired. <laughs> You've been fired at that. You've been point. fired from your hey, job. Hey guys, I just really quick because I do think we should go to the money zone. But I was, I did just Google Glenn Close, and I'm looking at her Wikipedia page. Uh, first of all, she's 69 years old. Nice. And <laughs> on her Wikipedia page is, and I'm not making this up. There's like in that little sidebar, it's like uh, Glenn Close at the Albert Knobs premiere in 2012. She looks amazing. Uh, it tells me all about her alma mater, her 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 many spouses, her her kid that she has, her parents, and then right under that is, and you can Google this if you don't believe me, um, just a picture of her signature. So I think I'm gonna probably steal her identity. I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hi, I, hi, I'm Glenn Close now. Catch me if you can. <laughs> I'm Glenn Farr. <laughs> catch, catch me if you can, Tom Hanks. Because I'm Glenn Close now, motherfucker. The name of this show can be changed to finally to my brother, my brother, and Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> Or Miss Close. Glenn I closer. mean, you'll you'll make us you'll make us call you Glenn Close. Yeah, thirty under thirty media luminary. Glenn Close. <laughs> Glenn Close. <laughs> All right, let's go to the money zone. I'm done. Hey, can I tell you guys about Nature Box? Hell yeah! I wish you would. Cause I'm I'm on that um. I'm on I'm on that bad bad baby sleep schedule and now I, I snack to survive. Every like I eat those um Big Island pineapple like they are fucking rings from Sonic the Hedgehog and they are actually keeping me alive. Uh it is an, a a wonderful service where you go to naturebox.com and you pick the snacks that you want uh, off their list and then they just show up in a a, a little basically what is essentially a treasure chest. That is sent to your house. Uh, these snacks taste great and they're better for you. They're made with high quality ingredients that are free from artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. So you can feel great about snacking. Um, like I said, Big Island Pineapple, pretty rad. They got whole wheat raspberry figgy bars. Love those. Uh, salt and pepper pop pops. Do you know uh, what I would do if I were Nature Box? I think I would release like a companion snack called like Small Island Pineapple. Oh, that's and fun. it's like fun. you eat them together, and like one makes you big, and one makes you tiny. Uh, oh, so it's magic. Sorry, Justin. No, Travis just floated magic food. Uh-huh. Okay, and, I mean that would be a good thing for them to sell. Justin, you and I need to be more careful because sometimes Travis floats things like magic food, and we are like, oh, <laughs> off to the next thing. Sounds good. But but I am curious, Travis. Hmm. Uh-huh. Um, what other sort of magic food Nature Box has that they ship you that um, you know about that they aren't talking about? Like the deep, like government conspiracy. They're afraid stuff. to let us know about. Yeah, I honestly, I'm afraid I've said too much. Oh, uh, so you couldn't think of enough. <laughs> 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 um, right now, you can save even more. Nature Box is offering our fans fifty percent off your first order when you go to naturebox.com/slash/mybrother. It's naturebox.com/slash/mybrother. Get fifty percent off your first order. One more again. Naturebox.com slash my brother. You did a really good job on that ad, Griffin. Thank you, dude. I think Travis probably was a little bit off his game because he was literally tweeting while we were doing that bit. Oh boy, what, what, tra- no, Justin, I, give me that Justin, give me that good tweet he was doing. I said that his goal is to get my bim bam verified. Can I do that? How do I do that? I still don't know how I got verified. So Jesus, that is the, that is a very, very, very good Travis McElroy tweet. Well, to be fair, I did tweet that during the lengthy break that we edited out where Justin ran to, I don't know, go to the bathroom, get coffee, check his, I don't know, TV to see what was on Nickelodeon. I didn't run to the bathroom. I'm not John Candy. I walked to the bathroom. (laughs) Okay. I'm not John Candy in every John Candy movie where he uses the bathroom and has to run to it. I am a gentleman and I walked to the restroom to devastate it. Um, I want to tell you guys about another sponsor, and it's Harry's. Uh, we've talked about Harry's 
many times, but I love uh, uh, the fact that the razors don't cost. I was I was just looking through the razor section today. Do you know they sell an eight pack? One of the big companies sells an eight pack of razors for forty five dollars. Yes, it's what? Like really lunacy. It's lunacy. I, lo- I love Harry's. Harry's is like the only like reasonable razor company in the whole world. But there's something kind of so dope about that. Like, yeah, eight razors. You'll use them in like two months. Forty dollars, please. What are you talking about, Shick? Yeah. What the fuck? I shouldn't have to have a budget line item for razors. Like, that shouldn't be listed among my utilities. And now I don't have to. They're just $2 a blade compared to the $4 or $5 or $6 that you'll pay at the drugstore. Yeah. Uh, what if Downey was, what if Downey was like eight rolls of paper towels? That'll be $160. Fuck you. All their products are great too. Their aftershave is the best I've ever used. Um, now, Harry's is so confident about the quality of their blades. They want you to try their shave set for free. You heard that right. Just cover shipping when you sign up. Plus, as a special offer for fans of our show, you go to harrys.com right now and enter code my brother at checkout and you get a post shave balm also free. It's the best and you can get it for free going to harrys.com and using the code my brother when you sign up. Um, I want to tell y'all. Oh, no, I want to. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> you got to do the thing with the snacks, and now I want to do this I one. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we only get to do this ad twice a year in the two weeks leading up to Valentine's Day. So let's. I just- know. Come on. It's okay. Go do it, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't know why the sound of my little brother crying makes me so happy. <laughs> really I just like, I just like, I just, I just feel, I've been looking forward to it. You know, folks, Valentine's Day is just around the corner and, uh, uh, Pro Flowers is making it easier than ever by taking out the guesswork on top of their already low prices. Right now you can get two dozen assorted roses with a free glass vase for $29.99 plus shipping and handling or upgrade for another $9.99. You can get two dozen long stem roses with premium vase and chocolate. Um, you can, uh, pick your flowers and then check it out in two minutes. Um, this hasn't happened, uh, this year, but last year, the first time Pray Flowers advertised with us, uh, they wanted to send us a sample of their product, which I thought was great. Uh, and they showed up and it was beautiful, just beautiful flowers. And you wouldn't believe these came in a, in a box. This, this is fantastic. No, they're really, really, they're, they're really beautiful pretty. And nice ex- to have around. Except the one thing. There's one about thing. It. There's one problem. The one problem is they send them for all the podcasts I do. So all of a sudden it went from like, oh, beautiful flowers to holy shit, I'm getting stalked. <laughs> fucking Max Medina is about to propose to me. He's just fucking packing my house with roses. And, uh, 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 uh it got to be a little bit of a, burden it got to be a little See, bit for, burdensome but they're gorgeous they're all gorgeous they're gorgeous flowers for me but it did uh, it did make it seem like justin had just died <laughs> when it happened to me i problem. felt that this must be what it's like to like fake your own death mm-hmm. and yeah. you get to like see the flowers people send mm-hmm. to the family i'm like ah oh, pro flowers really cares that i fake my death thank you pro flowers um, here's the only way to get two dozen assorted rows with free glass vase starting at $29.99. Just go to proflowers.com and use the code MYBROTHER. All one word. That's proflowers.com. Click on the microphone. Type in the code MYBROTHER. Don't wait. This deal expires soon. Can I read the fucking Jumbotron at least? Sure, yeah. Go for it. Uh, this Who is this message is- for? It's for Anna, a.k.a. Traveler. You're not and even going to read the thing right. And it's you're from... Not even gonna do the imp- you're not even going to do the impression. And it's from... Rosie, a.k.a. Potion Seller. Potion Seller. <laughs> Greetings, tra- tra- Traveler. Potion Seller. You seen that video? It's fucking good. <laughs> See, you don't even know the fucking meme. Listen to a big man on campus, Travis McRoy, doesn't know all the memes. <laughs> Potion Seller is Traveler. You see that? Man, I used to get blazed and just fucking roll that shit. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Surprise! By now it's been... Sorry, this is now the message. Surprise! By now it's been several months since I introduced you to Mim Bim Bim. 
Just don't know why it came out like that. And you, like a woman possessed, tore through the first hundred episodes in a matter of days. Those Sawbones is your true podcast soulmate. Thanks for being there for me during my year off. I'm so glad to be back on campus with you. Happy 21st, Anna. Great job. I'd like to say to Rosie, thank you. That's a beautiful message. Thank you for right in the middle there making sure to let us know that we are Anna's second favorite. Hey, I'll take it. It's fine. Um, yeah. It's fine. Are there like Terrace House fan casts? There is. Nick Robinson at Polygon just started doing one. Nice. Um, yeah. I don't know spoilers. I haven't finished Aloha State, but it's popping up. There's off, only though. eight eps, right? Right now? Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. We're, we're really pacing ourselves because we blew through season one. Welcome to our segment, uh, Terrace House Break, um, it's, where we talk it, about it's Terrace essential. House. Yeah, my dad. My dad asked me this week, "Was Terrace House?" Because I it, he took a fucking covert snap of me during Adventures in Recording, where I was wearing the beautiful Terrace House shirt that um uh, I received for Christmas from my dear brother, and uh, people were going nuts about it. And my dad asked me, "What's Terrace House?" And that it it was a real. I, don't, I didn't know how to explain Terrace House to my dad in a way that would yeah. make it appealing enough that he would watch it, which everybody should on Earth. I'm Allegra Ringo. And I'm Renee Colbert. And we host a podcast called Can I Pet Your Dog? Renee, can I tell you about a dog I met this week? Uh, I wish that you would. In turn, though, can I tell you about a dog hero? May I tell you about a dog breed in a segment I like to call Mutt Minute? (laughs) I would love that. Could we maybe talk about some dog tech? Could we have some cool guests on, like Lin-Manuel Miranda, Nicole Byer, and Ann Wheaton? I mean... Yeah, absolutely. I'm in. You're on board. What do you say we uh, we do all of this and put it into a podcast? Yeah, okay. You think? All right. Uh, should we call it like I don't know? Can I pet your dog? Sure. All right. Uh, what do you What do you say we put it on every Tuesday on Maximum Fun or on iTunes? Sounds What's good the- to me. <laughs> Meeting's over. I have a Yahoo here. Can I read it? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Oh. You're the boss. Uh, so was- what? You're the boss. Oh, okay. You're a media luminary. Um, if you feel like it's time for a Yahoo, you should go for it. That's a fucking good point. I'm just going to drop it then. It's also from Brooks Oglesby. Thank you, Brooks. It's by Yahoo Answers user Rose, who asks, I bet no one has asked this one before. What rides at an amusement park are best for kissing? Mmm. Mmm. You, you know... Do you Rose, guys remember... Do you remember having to find places to kiss? <laughs> This will be a good, this will be, a, uh, you'd be like walking in the park and you'd find like a little secluded grove and you'd think like, I should remember this for later for when I want to kiss. My good one was the instrument room in the band room, like the instrument closet is a good place to kiss. That's a good place to kiss. Mm, good kissing I in there. I will never forget being a teen and going mm. on a date to a movie and sitting in the back row so I can do some smooching. And then some fucking adults would come and sit, like, right in front of us. And it's like, I think you guys know exactly what you just did. You've ruined me. I think that you're being assholes right now. Do you think, Still- I, did you, do you think I wanted to see Prince of Egypt in theaters? No. no. I came here for a reason, and that was to kiss. And to listen to Donny Osmond sing. He's got a great voice. Um... What are the best rides at an amusement park, though? Because Tunnel of Love is obvious bullshit. If you kiss on the Tunnel of Love, it's like so, like, if, if, if somebody kiss, if my wife kissed me on a Tunnel of Love, I'd be like, really? Okay. Cause it's it, 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 here. Stop. Stop. This needs to be addressed. I, Yo. my first thought was the Tunnel of Love, right? Okay. But stop for a second and think. Oh my God. J- holy shit. Justin. What? You're right. Seriously, though, uh, media has perpetrated a lot of lies on us growing up as kids, mm-hmm. especially like old cartoons. I've never in my entire adult life, I've traveled all across this great land of ours. I've never, ever, ever seen a tunnel of love. I've seen a fake Mario Brothers castle that kids could run around on and fall and die. Like, I've I've seen a spaceship that spins around so fast that you stick to the walls. I've never yeah. seen a tunnel of love of in my love. entire because life. It's essentially, what a tunnel of love is, is a timed hand job challenge. <laughs> okay, are, you t- are you tough enough? Kick, you kick, have a hundred- jacket. You have 118 <laughs> seconds. Go! Uh-oh. Look up ahead. Do you hear the clown music? You better hurry. You better hurry and finish to the clown music. <laughs> That's when the camera flashes. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to buy your pictures? I don't. Please don't. Don't show the pictures. <laughs> what? I. 
I think some real next level smooching would happen on bumper cars, but here's the thing. Oh two my God. separate cars. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You so have to you- bump to smooch. Okay. It's kind of like that scene in Fast Five, or maybe Fast Six, where Vin catches Letty in the air, and because their cars crash into each other, mm-hmm. or something or like, like that. that scene. I think it's Fast Five, where The Rock and Vin Diesel pull up next to each other and smooch. And they kiss. They crash their cars into each other, and like, you want to fight? Like, no, I have a better idea. And they do kiss right there. Mm-hmm. Man. Why did he turn evil, though? I'm still so torn <laughs> up inside about it. It was about it. family. It was about family, but it's not anymore. Damn it. Damn it. Here's a question. What's a, Here, I got well, question. You, Okay. Did, oh, did you have something else you want to say about Fast and Furious? I've always so wanted to talk about Fast and the Furious on our podcast. No, there's, so There's so many different rides at an amusement park where you could kiss on. I think the best and, one would be at Universal Studios, the Fast and the Furious. There's a part in the tram ride where it's like, hey, here's uh, this used to be where we filmed Desperate Housewives. And here's the back lot. Where we film all of our street scenes. And now, oh, it's Dominic Toretto and gang, and they're with us. What's that? There's a bad guy trying to catch us? We're in a tram, but it's souped up, and let's take a jump. It's like, whoa, hold on. It's what weird happened? how they do that at Universal, and they're like, here we are, and there's the lot where we film whatever the fuck, and here was some bad movie that we filmed here, and then, uh, oh, what's that? The tram's in the middle of a flood! And it's like, no, That's, you can't be like, sense. here's a tour of Universal, and then you're in, you're in periled. They also have that studio tour at Universal Studios Florida. Nothing is filmed there. Craig, Nothing you're not going to see nope. any celebs. There's Duck Dynasty and <laughs> end of tour. I when I when Teresa and I went to the Universal Studios, somebody got very excited because there was like a board like posted on a wall that showed what TV shows are filmed at that studio, and one of them was like Mindy Project. And I saw this family lose their fucking minds that they were like, they film Mindy Project here, and I was like, not here though, like. Not in a place you're going to go. Where's Why Mindy? are you so excited? It Mindy. might as well have said, like, this is where we film Cheers. Like, <gasps> here, here. Yeah. like, yeah, you're not going to see it. They, they don't have to prove that to you. Yeah, you say that, but when we took the NBC Studio Tour and we went up into AH, you you know we were losing it. You know we were flipping yeah, out. That is true. Thinking about um, that's I- where fucking uh, uh, Brian Fellows had done his thing. <laughs> and the fucking, if you think about it, if you think about it for a second, Travis, Studio 8H is uh, where uh, I said a bottle of sparkling apple juice to your house, did you get it, was uh, actually shit. filmed, if you think about it. <laughs> this is like when I went to Nickelodeon Studios and they let us walk onto the set of the mystery files of Shelby Wu. <laughs> uh, I want to get to this last question because it's so fucking good. Please. My dad admitted to me that he had never seen Willy Wonka. <laughs> Now here, then it gets b- more buck wild. Oh my god! He's a huge fan of Gene Wilder. <laughs> so I told him to watch it. After a year of trying to get him to watch Willy Wonka, I finally bought him a Blu-ray player with a copy of Willy Wonka. That was three years ago. Every time I see him, I beg him to watch Willy Wonka, and he watches reruns of Mash and Big Bang Theory instead. <laughs> You guys are my last hope. How do I convince you to watch this movie? Oh my That's god! Done this with my is dad all time. In and in fact, a question asked here, and I didn't include it in the list here, but in the email also included their dad's phone number, so we could call their dad. I guess ostensibly call their dad to tell <laughs> their dad, shit, "Hey, we're dude. three people you don't know, but <laughs> fucking watch Willy Wonka, old man." Yeah, please watch Willy Wonka for a second. This is this is this is fucking. St- Stellar, are you kidding me? This is the best question. He, I I love Vin Diesel. Oh yeah, man, Fast and Furious. Fast and the Who now? Who? Well, I'm more of a boiler room kind of guy. Holy shit. F- huge fan of Gene Wilder. I haven't seen the Willy Wonka movie, but the the Frisco kid is awesome. Now I will say this. Great flick. Gene Wilder does have a body of work where you could conceivably <laughs> be a huge fan of the man and not see Willy Wonka. I don't want to disparage that is, that's fair, his I other guess, work, yeah. like fucking the uh, no, Frisco. The Frisco Kid rules. That's fair. Uh, uh, yeah, like he basically but, rolls in everything. Like fucking watch Silver Streak and don't come away a huge fan of Gene Wilder. It's literally impossible. But but the difference here is like that. That all holds true the first time you bring it up to your dad and you're like. So what about Willy Wonka? And he's like, what? And you're like, Willy Wonka? 
a, a movie that like is an amazing character study, like by Gene Wilder. It's like an acting class to watch this part, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. Never gonna watch it. It's love like, the man's work. It's like arguably like between, I would say between uh, Heath Ledger Joker and 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 Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka for like literally the best performance by any actor in any movie literally ever like i don't think yeah. there's a better one Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger joker jared leto's joker <laughs> and then right there three with a bullet gene wilder's joker he would have been oh, fucking fuck, great that me? So oh my god god that would have been good uh, he would have been riddler he would have been an amazing riddler oh my god Trace, that's even better or clock king man that motherfucker could have been any of them could've been, could've been a calendar man. Fucking, he could have been Batman. <laughs> could have been. This is my, this is my sixty-five-year-old Ward Robin. <laughs> Hello, Batman. The Batman Future Show. Damn it! Just put it, the the movie. Just in. put it on. Just, Just put, strap your dad in. Fucking <laughs> Clockwork Orange, your dad. Now and it, make him watch this this culturally important film. It is gonna be a weird twenty minutes where your dad's like. It's just old people in a bed. <laughs> like, no, listen. <laughs> Why is this kid so sad? He's buying so much chocolate. And, okay, Dad, you're going to hang in there. You're going to love this movie, Dad. There's so much candy. I've been watching it for 20 minutes. Now I haven't seen a single sweet. <laughs> where's the, where's where's the this sweets? fat kid? And this kid in front of a, a TV. I see what a, the there's fuck? A fat kid, there's a very spoiled girl, but where's the sweets, Jeremy? <laughs> where's and my jean? Been, there has been very little of my favorite actor, Gene Wilder, he, from the Frisco team. I what if say he showed in the movie and he said, oh, Gene Wilder, I was thinking of somebody else. <laughs> I, was thinking of, I was thinking of Gene Hackman. Love that guy's work. I love Gene Hackman's stuff. Fucking tail, tail wag dog or whatever. Mm-hmm. The, wag the dog, the tail. Love him. He and that, probably. The problem with watching it, like, for the first time, sight unseen, is there's a chance he'll think Arthur Slugworth is the protagonist, and he'll start mm, rooting for him uh-huh. from the jump. I like the look of this Slugworth guy. He's got goals, uh, but I want he's, he's a mover and a shaker. For some reason, I look and sound like him. <laughs> Do you think Mike TV's last name was TV, or that was just a nickname they called him because he liked TV? His last name is T-E-E-V-E-E. Mike TV. That's a weird choice by Roald Dahl, because none of the other kids are named that way. Yeah. My name's Augustus Fat Candy. Yeah, like, it's just such a weird, like, and uh, Mike uh, TV. I'll come up with something better later. Yeah, I'll figure it out later. Whatever. It might be T-E-A-V-E-E. I like, I like to think that if I was a, a pornographic film actor, I would mm-hmm. be called Augustus Fat Candy. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me, just one moment. If could, if I just have a moment of your time, I googled to check my spelling in Mike TV, and on the Wikipedia page, or the sorry, the Roll Doll Wiki page for Mike Uh-oh. TV, there is Uh-oh. a behind the scenes fact that the original name for Mike TV was going to be Herpes Trout. Get the fuck <laughs> out of the door. He rolled. Roll. Uh, yeah, little... I read through your manuscript here. We were so excited to publish your new book. Um, couple notes, couple notes. Uh, we felt like the pacing was a little off the first twenty. But also, uh, one of the kids is named Herpes. Yep. Yeah, one of the children is a sexually diseased fish, and maybe we could roll that back a little. We could roll to that back a little bit. What do you say? And also, maybe instead of being a kid who's obsessed with sexually diseased fish, he just watches a lot of TV, watches a lot of what television, and there could be a bit of a morality tale there. I know what I need. I all 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 men sound like this to Griffin. <laughs> I'm gonna have to rethink the whole book now. My my life is basically like Anomalisa, where every man who isn't one of you two basically just Hey Griffin, you wanna come watch the Royal Rumble today? Yeah, sure. So anyway, this has been my brother, my brother and me. It's an advice show for the modern era. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed yourself. We have some exciting announcements. For a change, some ex- we're doing we're doing things again. We're doing things <laughs> we're, again. We're shaking off our torpor against against all odds. We're doing things again. Um, so first off, and we don't have specifics on this, but the trailer for our show is going to drop this week at some point, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. This is like 
This is like a super cut trailer with clips. Like, have y'all seen it? Because we saw the original trailer, but there was far too much cursing in it. Yeah, it we actually thing? had a, an original cut that we loved that had um, like seven like f words in it, fucks in it, and then we cut those out. It's still very good, and like it's you're not missing good. anything because we just say that word when we can't think of a funny thing, to say, so you're not missing much, mm-hmm. but. Uh, that trailer will go up somewhere this week. So keep an eye on, uh, uh, at MBMBAM or our Facebook page and we'll be sure to retweet it from there. Um, also, we are doing a live show in Portland, Hello. Oregon on uh, March 18th. That's going to be part of the XOXO fest, um, which we're excited to be a part of. Um, and yeah, it's our first live show in fuck dudes. What was the, was the last live show we did? Candle nights in September? Yeah. Yes, Griffin. Then we had babies. Then we all had babies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn it. But, uh, uh, we need, Trav, you need to gin up a, uh, bit.ly link for this. Okay. I'll do it right now. Okay. How about Mabim Bam XOXO? Yeah, that's good. Cool. MBMBAM bit.ly forward slash MBMBAM XOXO. And, uh, we need to address is is the XOXO fest is that Zozo? Is he haunting us again? Is that Zozo? Back in the mix. Damn it! But uh, that's gonna be March eighteenth. Doors at six. Show at seven. My brother, my brother, and me. Uh, the podcast. So that'll be popping we're, off. We're also in the process of planning another live show for later in the spring. <laughs> And details to follow. Details to follow, but soon. Should follow soon. As soon as we have dates, because we know it's like an issue for people to like clear up scheduled times and, and, and things like that. It's going to be a single city jam, like our a Boston single city affair, yeah. show. Uh, but it's going to be fun. So uh, fun we'll, and good. We'll let you know. Um, thank you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song instead of Partra off the album Putting the Days to Bed. It's a wonderful album that you need to have. <laughs> Have it somehow. Um, I also want to thank Max Fun for having us. You can go to MaximumFun.org. Check out all the great podcasts there. Uh, they're all free and they're all super great. You're going to love listening to them. I guarantee it. We've got shows like Throwing Shade and uh, Stop Podcasting Yourself. And they have shows like uh, One Bad Mother and Lady to Lady. Really, really good podcasts you can go listen to all at MaximumFun.org. If you want to hear more podcasts from us uh, or want to see video stuff that we do, you can go to McElroyShows.com. Uh, you can find all our contact info and P.O. boxes and how to get in touch with us all at McElroyShows.com. Um, is that it? We done? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, got a final Yahoo here from Morgan Davey. Keep it wavy, Morgan Davey. Thank you, Morgan. It's by Yahoo Answers user. Gabriel the Angel. <laughs> Gabriel the Angel. Who asks... Where can I get free clarinet sheet music of Linkin Park? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Justin McRoy. I'm Travis McRoy. <laughs> this has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. <laughs> My name is Patrick. My name is Ariel. My name is Joe Coughlin. The first time I uh, went to MaxFunCon, I didn't know anyone. I was really uh, nervous about that. Everyone said not to worry about going alone, that I'd make friends right away, that I'd have an amazing time. It turns out everyone was right. I instantly had 200 new friends. I've made lifelong friends at MaxFunCon that I'm going to keep in touch with for the rest of my life. If you aren't sure if you belong at MaxFunCon, you belong. Don't be like me. Don't waste two years being too nervous. Just go already. Join Ariel, Patrick, and Joe at MaxFunCon. Tickets for MaxFunCon and MaxFunCon East are on sale now at MaxFunCon.com. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.